Let's go ahead and take a nice deep breath. We're gonna do our Qigong warm up exercises, which we do all, every time. We're gonna sit up straight, get into that Tai Chi feeling and that th Tai Chi uh, uh, posture. Whether it's standing or sitting, it's basically the same. The feet on the floor, weight distributed evenly between the balls of the feet and the heel of the foot. Uh, we try to sit up straight. Relax your shoulders. Don't punch your shoulders up like this. Relax your shoulders. And then rotate your shoulders forward uh, as if you're hollowing the chest. Uh, and tuck your chin in and raise your crown. Uh, relax, bring your hands up, palms facing up and out to the sides, taking a deep breath and then overhead and come down and exhale, push down. So you know, imagine you're, you're pulling up energy from the earth, bringing it overhead, grabbing energy from the heavens as it were and pushing it down into your lap, uh, past the Dan Tien, which is this area right here underneath your belly, but about two or three inches in toward the back of the spine. This is the area for you, for the newcomers or people new to that Tai Chi, that is a very kind of sacred area, if you will, in Tai Chi. It's the area where you sink the energy to, where you control, where, where, the, where you imagine the energy is stored. And from this, this area, it emanates out. And it coincides with the center of gravity of the human body. And the rotations in the Tai Chi, the small rotations in the Tai Chi get transferred to larger rotations around the waist. And finally, those rotations, or energy in those rotations are transferred to the arms, the shoulders, and the hands. And so you're not just moving your hands, the hands are moving, following the, the circular movement of, that originates in the Dantian, it's a small movement, uh, and then expands into the waist. And this is very important in Tai Chi, and it's important whether you're doing it standing or sitting up, okay? So if you have any questions about that, or if you have any difficulty feeling that movement, that circular movement, and feeling that movement uh, originate here and then get transferred to your hands when you're doing it in the sitting because when we're, when we're doing the form, uh, don't, don't, don't hesitate, hesitate to ask me or to tell me that you're having some difficulty feeling that energy. And maybe we can do some uh, exercises or I can show you how to do some exercises that'll get you into that feeling, uh, specifically the exercise that we call silk reeling, which we've done a few times in this class. Okay, so bringing the energy up and don't exaggerate it. We don't wanna go up here, punch our shoulders up. We wanna maintain the posture. So we're bringing the hands up over our head, trying not to raise your, your shoulders. When you reach that point where you feel your shoulders are raising, just turn your hands over and come down. So we don't wanna exaggerate any of those movements. They should be smooth and they should be graceful. And we should maintain, and they should be done within this posture that we define when we start. So let's bring, now let's bring the hands up, coming out. And again, we don't wanna overextend, just like we don't wanna overextend coming up. In the opening breath, bringing the hands up and down. As we come up, the fingers sort of point down and then we take a deep breath as we come up and then turn the fingers over and push down and exhale. And we come up one more time and turn the hands inward and pull in and breathe in, which is a stretching uh, feeling, pulling energy in against the general resistances, of course, turning the hands out, pushing out and exhaling. This is a relaxed, uh, we exhale when relaxed, we inhale when we expand or stretch. So here we're relaxing out, exhale, turning the palms facing out 
opposite each other. Now we're holding this ball again. And now we're gonna extend the ball all the way out, extend the arms all the way back until we almost touch our shoulder blades together. Again, stretching, breathing in. Slowly exhale, pull in. Feel that resistance as you're pulling in against resistance. Pull in, inhale, push out, exhale, expand. Stretch, relax, come back to center. And one more time, in. Out. And now gently turn the palms facing down. And now we're pushing down against that gentle resistance again. We get to our laps. We're just now going to totally relax. Take a few deep breaths. And again, come up holding this ball. And let's open and close. Breathing in and out. And let's turn the ball over and rotate it symmetrically around the perimeter or circumference. And see if you can make this very symmetrical. Like a diagram or drawing. See how precise you can make this ball. So here we're applying our minds, right? We're thinking about the symmetry and how to make the balls perfectly symmetrical in the, uh, symmetrical in the top of the bottom. And then let's turn to the side and then rotate out side to side, and rotate to the other side. Now here, what I'd like you to do, like we did, the start of the beginning of the last session is I want you to imagine as you're doing this exercise, turning from side to side, that your waist is leading the movement. So when you get to this side, just before you end at this side, your waist is already starting to move and pull the hands with it to the other side. And if you, if you think about what's happening, is you're using your waist as a kind of whip to move the hands. And open and close. So this would be the same thing like if you were throwing a ball, uh, if you just reach back like this and throw the ball, uh, that's one thing. But if you reach back and you use your wrist in a whip-like action to throw the ball, what's happening is, is my elbow is starting to move forward before, before my, my uh, the palm of my hand, which I'm going to be striking with. And so this movement in the forearm leads the movement in the hand and it creates this whip-like motion. Same thing in lag and golf is as you come up uh, and you set up to take uh, in the upswing in golf, the waist turns and the hands follow the waist and that creates this lag, what they call lag or this whip-like action, which, which adds energy uh, uh, to the, to the, to the golf strikes, same in baseball, golf, almost any sport for that matter. Um, so this isn't anything new, but in Tai Chi, the, uh, the movement is initiated in the waist. Uh, having said that, I keep, um, uh, stopping in the middle of the, our Qigong, uh, exercise, but these, these are important, uh, concepts. Uh, when we do brush knee, some people do brush knee, actually, instead of we do it, we bring it back like this and just come forward. And what we're doing here is sweeping across and blocking and coming forward and striking, right? I mean, that's the, that's the intent of this move. A lot of times you'll see, you'll see brush knee done like this, where the hand 
comes straight back rather than this way and where the hand comes straight back and cocks and then the the forearm initiates the move and drives the force forward just like throwing a ball and this adds more energy to it so i invite you to do it this way is to bring the hand back like this and cock the hands of the fingers are pointing forward and then initiate the move by extending the fingers up and rotating the heel of the hand out to strike. That'll double the energy uh, in the strike if you're using it uh, for martial, uh, in a martial application. Um, uh, you'll see this same theme really in all of the moves that we do, but in most cases it's subtle and, and you don't notice it, but you still would like to try to have that feeling. I try to engender that feeling in your body because you're going to get more out of it by, uh, uh, that way. Okay, moving on, we've done this exercise. And now let's just extend it to the side. So instead of forming the bowl, let's push to the side, one hand out, the other hand in, both fingers pointing forward, rotating the hands and turning and pushing to the other side. Now, again, I'm exaggerating this movement. But if you look at my, at my belly, I'm turning, I'm turning my waist just before I turn the hands to move in the other direction to create that whip-like action. It's very subtle, we're doing it slowly to practice, to practice really achieving that, um, that concept. Okay, good. Let's take a deep breath and come down. Now again, if you add this dimension of, of the, uh, of the twisting of the waist to drive the energy of the hands and the arms, you're going to, from a health standpoint, uh, you're gonna really get more exercise in your, in, your, in your back, the small of your back and your spine. And so it's that rotation in the spine uh, in, with, uh, in combination with these movements that's really gonna strengthen your core muscles. Uh, and so uh, obviously the reason we're uh, for, attending this class is for health purposes, not necessarily to learn how to defend yourself. Okay, so, uh, so now, now let's move uh, to, uh, to turning. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna wind up, uh, we're gonna start open and close. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the hands in opposite directions and turn and look at the palm or one hand and then the other. So here, what we're doing is again, the waist is turning slightly before the hands, a little bit more difficult to do, a little bit more subtle because the hands are moving in opposite direction. Principle is the same. And we wanna get this roundness, notice the roundness, the roundness in, in my, uh, in my hands, in my arms, that's called pong, P-E-N-G. It's called pong energy. And it's what we like to do with all the movements because this form, this, this roundness creates more power. It creates more structure, more balance, Uh, and more structural integrity. So here, what we're doing is reaching across, deflecting, at the same time, reaching down with the other hand and blocking. And you can see it's a very symmetrical movement in both directions, one is the mirror image of the other. This is also the same move in part the wild horses made, 
which uh, we do have in this form. It's not called that. It's called deflection before the parian punch. This move here, which I don't know which one it is. I'd have to look on my chart. 17, I think. This move here, deflection is very much like this move here. It's very similar. All right. But um, we're just doing it and it's facing each other rather than doing it in and out of this plane, uh, which is changing the, the direction of the movements and um, making them go to side to side rather than front to back. Imagine you're deflecting a force or strike at the same time reaching back and striking back. Passing the hands past each other. Good. All right. Make two fists, bring the heart of the fist up, bring the fist to your side, uh, and this would be at the, uh, at the waist. Notice your elbows are straight back, not out. Uh, there is a form where the elbows come out and in as you strike. It's called a turtle form, part of the Shen Yi 12 element strikes. Uh, there are 12, I'm sorry, 12 animals. So in Shen Yi, you have five element, uh, uh, five element form, uh, but then to make it a little bit more complicated, there are 12 animal forms you learn. And one of them, they're named after animals, of course, and one of them is a turtle. Uh, don't ask me why, but uh, I'm sorry, dove. And it makes sense, it's dove. So dove, the wings are coming in. If you've watched birds fight with their wings, uh, they slap their wings in and out like this. And this is actually a very effective punch to the midsection bringing the arms back like this and then thrusting them out like this. And it's done uh, jumping forward in the standing position. Okay, so, um, so how do we get into that? So we got into that by, we're gonna, we're gonna start uh, with the hands back like this, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna punch out torsionally, like twisting and punching out at the same time, turn at the waist, and it's the waist that turns first again. All of these, it's the same concept. Uh, and then at the same time, we're gonna kick with the other foot. So this is called contralateral. It's a contralateral movement. It's punching with one hand and kicking with the other foot. You can kick either by kick out straight with the toe, which is called a toe kick, or you can bring your leg up and kick out with the heel called a heel kick. It's up to you, whichever one you wanna do. So here we go, one, Two, if you have trouble with this move, don't kick out so high, just kick out low. Or step if, if you can't kick. Don't lean back, sit up straight. This is really good exercise for your quadriceps. I'm gonna do a kick now, a, knee, uh, a heel kick. And let's take a closing breath. And while we're down here, let's go ahead and do the toes. I'm sorry, the ankle, the ankle exercise, which is just simply uh, putting the toe down, lifting the heel and rocking from side to side. I see, um, is that Felicia? Hi, I see she's standing up doing these. That's great.
And now let's just put the foot down and rock back and forth from one side to the other. Now I'm gonna do the other foot. Heel first, back and forth. And side to side. Okay, good. Let's do the fry, uh, five animal frolic uh, qigong today, all right? The five animals, let's start with deer. So we're sitting up straight. Uh, we're gonna put our hands on our lap. We're gonna start in this position. You can put your hands to your side if you want uh, and relax. Now we're doing this in the sitting position. So we made a few modifications, uh, especially with regard to uh, the, um, the last one, which is the uh, stork uh, spreading its wings, which is done with kicks in three directions, but we're only gonna do the kick in the uh, sagittal plane back and, uh, uh, back and forth. So we start out, we're relaxed. We bring the hands up, down, just like in the opening move, Qigong and then bring the hands to the sides as if you're parting bushes. And then what we're gonna do is push out forward with one palm as we push back the other palm. I want you to try to bend your wrist as much as possible. What we're doing is we're stretching the tendons in the shoulders, the arms, and the, and the wrists. And then we're going to look back at the back hand. Sitting up straight, look back, look far, as far back as you can to feeling comfortable without exceeding your comfort level. And then as we switch, pushing out and pulling in, we look back to the other side. And let's continue this movement. Breathing in and out. And now when you're at any time you want us to, to finish this, this move, uh, what I want you to do is turn that both hands over and strike up over the wrist. So the hands are wrists across, like the hands are crossed. So this is a strike up over the wrist and then bring the hands down across the lap and up and down. Let's try it again. So one more, left hand out, right hand back, turn the hands over, strike up, swoop down, and relax. Now, if you're doing this standing up, all you do to add this is add one more element to it. And so in the case of deer coming up and down 
you sink, getting ready to step, because we always sink before we step to lower the center of gravity. And then I'm gonna step out with the heel first. And as I come forward, I'm gonna come into a bow and arrow stance. And so the move's gonna look like this. And now I'm gonna push opposite hand and foot into this bow and arrow stance, back and forth. And then as I come up, I strike up and then I, I come up and I step parallel. And finish. And it's the same with, with uh, almost all the movements, except store clothes wings. Um, you're gonna do that step into a what's known as a bow and arrow stance. Okay, let's do monkey. Monkey comes up and down the same way. Now we spin the hands. Count one or one hand, right hand going clockwise, the left hand going counterclockwise. We come up, forming our monkey paws. And here we reach out and step out into a bow and arrow if we're standing. And you can simulate this if you like by just stepping out with the right foot. Imagine you're grabbing fruit. And then you're gonna basically step up with the left foot. But if you're sitting, maybe bring the right foot back, come down and take your closing breath. Okay. So if you were standing uh, to do this move, the hand movements are exactly the same. Feet apart. Come up and see. All right, spin around. Form your monkey paws. And we're gonna step forward and pick the fruit into this bow and arrow stance. And now come up and bring the fruit in, bring the foot up parallel, push down. When you're stepping forward, Sifu, you're not stepping at an angle. Are you stepping straight ahead, parallel? Um, when I do this, I do it at an angle. Okay, that's what I'm trying to determine. Okay. Yeah, and I do it in both directions. I do it to the right. Mm -hmm. I do it to the left. Okay. But you can do it. You can do it standing up. But when you step out, you're always stepping out at an angle. Mm -hmm. You'll end up here and you want it, if you keep doing that, you'll go in that direction. So now the next one is I would turn forward and step out to the left. Okay, thank you. So I'm starting out straight and going to the diagonals. Now, when I do this in class, they can't see me if they're in back and I'm doing this move movement up here. So I usually do it starting out to the side like I did here. So you can see the movement. So if I did it this way, it'd be hard for you to see. If I do it this way, you can see my hands and my feet at the same time. That's not so important. Okay. Um, let's move on. Let's do uh, tiger. Tiger, instead of coming up and down, it goes to the right, to the left, just like in that beginning exercise. And so what we do is we come up and we push to the one side and we push to the other side. Now, the way to remember this is tiger is a big animal. Instead of pushing this, the bushes aside gently, tiger pushes the trees aside or the bigger, the bigger bushes aside. So you go to one side and the other, just like in the exercise, you make your tiger claws, you come back to center or to the diagonal if you're doing it that way and sweep down and up in an arc. So this is a circular movement, a small movement in front of the Dan Tian. And to really do this right, you imagine that your Dan Tian is driving the movement. So you imagine your Dan Tian is spinning uh, down and up in a circle. 
And then you do this one more time in a bigger circle and reach all the way back. And come down, cross your hands. And end up like this. Okay, so if you were doing it standing, I'm gonna do it to the diagonal so you can, you can see it. Or I can do it this way, it doesn't matter. My feet are apart. I sink and push to one side to the other. Notice the rotation of the, of the waist. And now I come back to center, shift my weight to one side, step out. And now over the knee, I extend in this bow and arrow stance. Two and back. Notice I'm not doing this. I'm maintaining an upright posture. It's very much like Tai Chi. It's this upright posture, reaching back, looking back. And then I, as I come down, I step up parallel and close. This is very powerful medicine. Bear, just like the others with the exception of tiger, starts this way. And now bear sits up. And there are now different versions of this that we, so far we've been using uh, Buddha, Buddha breathing or natural breathing. Uh, and, but in the, in the bear sequence, what's good to do is the second time you come up and you take a breath, I want you to tighten your perineum. And then I want you to take three breaths, keeping your perineum tightened. Really tighten it, tighten the muscles in your stomach too. Now take another breath and relax. And now bring your hands to the side, just like in, uh, just like in deer. And instead of pushing back and forth, we're gonna go back and look back and look back. So you're just gently swinging your arms from side to side. And then come back forward, cross your hands and take your closing breath. And if we were doing this standing, it's not really much different. I like to start this way. And in your knees, coming up and down. Take your deep, uh, three breaths with perineum tighten. Exhale. Now you're gonna sink as you transfer the weight to one side, lift the heel, step out to the diagonal, in with a bow and arrow, turning, hands at your side, looking back. Try to maintain good posture, upright. Keep your chin tucked in, raise the crown. Come up parallel. Closing breath. I think we did four animals. The last one is crane. 
I think I've shown you these before, even in the standing position. But anyway, crane is done. Crane or stork is done. Again, four out of the five start this way. The exception is tiger, which is back and forth like this. So we come up and down, bring the hands extend to the side, flap once. And now as we kick out straight, it's hard for me to do this, I'm running out of room, but uh, as the hands come down, the foot comes up. As the hands come up, the foot comes down. One, and then we go one, kick up, hands down, kick up slowly. One more time. And now just turn the palms up this time and come overhead and down. Same thing on the other side. Other leg. One, kick up, swoop down, kick, swoop down, kick. Turn the palms up and over and down. And if we're doing this standing, it's much, it's much more difficult because we're gonna kick in three directions. So the movement would be like this. And transferring the weight to one side, we're going to kick once, kick to the side, kick back, and then one, two, three, step up and down. So the, this motion going in three directions, uh, is um, uh, is something it just it just takes practice, uh, and it's great for balance. So we're doing it sitting, so we don't have to worry about that. So all I did was remove the side, the front, the side, and the back kicks, and I ended up with the, the last part of it, which is three kicks so, uh, in the sagittal plane at the same time doing this. So I just simplified it to make it more amenable to a sitting position. All right, any questions before we move on? So we've done five animals. It's 11.47. Um, I'm going to send you, a, uh, I'm going to try to remember to send Leslie, Leslie will send this to you, a list of the uh, 31 forms uh, so that you, you have this. You can buy this, um, this poster from, Whole Lamb Productions. It folds out. It's very nice. You can pin it up, and it shows all of the diagrammatically. It shows all of the movements with a simple explanation. Separate hands. Take a step to the right, left, and so forth. But of course, this is um, this is done in done in the standing position, and I've mod modified it for this class for, to make it uh, uh, a sitting form. All right. So let's, let's move on and let's get to the sun style. And we're at move number, uh, let's get to the form. And we're at move number 20, uh, 28, which is brush knee left. So we did repulse the monkey. Uh, we did two repulse the monkeys. Normally it's done to the left and to the right, but we did, this, we did them in the same direction toward the screen. Uh, and the next move is going to be a brush knee uh, left. Uh, I'm sorry, a brush, a brush knee right, uh, and followed by leisurely tying the coat. So we've already done this before. Now, the first time we did it, we initiated the move by starting on the left-hand side and doing a brush knee left, pulling the gun out of the holster, pushing it forward, connecting, bringing it down, in, out, to the side, and out, and finally turning it open and close. Okay, so that's what we did the first time around. 
This is exactly the same. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, this is that exactly the same, but it's the mirror image done on the other side. So to do this, to get to that other side, we have to do a brush knee right and end up in this position versus ending up in this position. Okay, so we do our open and close. We turn to the right. We do brush knee. Now, once again, I want to remind you, you can relax the hand, the palm down, and then as you do the brush knee, the left hand sweep is exactly the same, but you can modify it to use that whip-like action if you like. It's very nice. It's got a really nice fluid feel feeling to it too. Yeah, that's right, Chad. All right. Now what we're, we're in a position to do our leisurely tying the coat. And it's the same thing. We turn the hands so that the palms are facing each other. All right, now we start with the left palm down the thumb attached to the hip, basically. The finger's pointing down, the palm pointing down. The right hand is, is outstretched out. Turn the palms facing each other. We bring the right hand up and in and out. It's a circular motion. And so you're doing a, uh, a clockwise movement to bring the hand up into position and touching this finger to the left, to the right, inside of the right wrist, which is the opposite of what we did before. Opening both hands up, this part's the same, bringing it in, striking out, all right? I'm sorry, we're here like this, in and out. And then we're turned to the left, turning the waist, and the hands together and bring the left palm up like we're holding a tray underneath the shoulder. Notice that I've still got the attachment of my right fingers to the inside of the left elbow, but I'm gonna now turn this hand over 180 degrees so that when I'm facing you, now they're both facing out. So it's kind of like a hinge and you can, you don't, don't have to remember this, it happens naturally if you just maintain that contact and turn it out and push. All right, open the hands up. Well, let's leave that until the next time. Okay, so uh, if we want, uh, we can just practice the, uh, the brush knee, uh, brush knee right, followed by uh, leisurely tying the coat. Uh, so you've done brush knee right before. Uh, we're just, we're just going to do it again. And it's just basically a movement, a way to lead into leisurely tying the coat. All right. It's a kind of way of setting up for that movement. Now, what's going on here is you do your brush knee, you bring this left, turn the palms facing each other. You bring this hand up and out and just pass, bringing the right hand in and touch the wrist, right fingers to the left wrist. Now your left hand is extended past the right palm, but the palms are facing each other. And then when you turn the palms over, keep the connection come in, up and out, and now you shift to the right. So it's the left, uh, shift to the left. So it's the left forearm which leads. And the right palm, the right palm is guiding this motion. And then coming around, it's in the position to push or strike. Uh, so how would you use this? Um, there's a lot of applications uh, embodied in this move because it's a complex move composed of, si uh, of six different moves actually, all called leisurely tying the coat. And it's the most difficult of, I think, of all the movements in the form. Uh, we start out again with brush knee, right hand out, left hand down, all right? Turn the palms facing each other. And we're bringing this palm up and out and bringing the right palm back in and touching. Opening the hands up. 
coming in and up. Now, this, this movement here is, can be, uh, this movement here gets these hands in, into position to draw back and lift. So this is a lifting force. So if you imagine if somebody were to come at you, you would just uh, sink and lift and divert the, the, that strike up. Uh, so this is a parry, but it's in another direction. We have used to doing a parry like this or this uh, in the form. We do it twice in both directions. So we do, we do deflect, deflect, parry, and punch. And here all we're doing is bringing the hands in, shifting back away from the upcoming force and lifting it. And it doesn't take a lot of force to do that. If you have a partner, ask them to gently and carefully make a fist and punch you, punch at you, slowly and to lift your hands together underneath and just lift that up and you'll see how easy it is to divert the force coming in up out of the way once it's up out of the way you would turn your hands in like this underneath and push out which is which is engendered in the form right and so what you're doing is you're using two hands to lift Normally, in other, other styles of Tai Chi, they lift with one hand. Uh, and uh, Sun Lu Kang, in his wisdom, figured, why not use both hands? Using both hands is more accurate. Way of deflecting than using one hand. If I use one hand, I might miss. If I use two hands, it's very hard to miss. So all you're doing is shifting back and lifting up. And then coming in with some other something else. It could be lifting up and turning and using an elbow to the ribs. It could be a lot of different things. Okay, so what you've got in this move is a linked form where in the individual elements of the link or individual movements within the six moves. So each of, the, each of these movements can be used individually or together, but they're not necessarily move, used in the order that we do the form. Uh, we're doing it, we're linking it uh, in a form in order to learn how to practice the individual movements, but the individual movements can be applied individually given the circumstance, all right? So you want to get a way of, uh, get out of thinking that you need to do this before you do this, before you do this. Is that clear? Okay, good. Uh, so let's, let's see what time it, what time is it? I think we have about two minutes. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do this movement again. Uh, and then um, the next week we're going to conclude. And then we're going to spend the rest of the sessions just simply going through the entire form and doing the form over and over again. All right. So you can get it down. And then you can stop me as you wish and ask questions if, you're, if you have any questions about how to do uh, the, the individual movements. And so in the few minutes left, uh, let's let's set up from open and close, turning to the right, setting up on the right, doing the brush knee, pulling the turning the palms facing each other, pulling. Oh, this is uh, this is leisurely tying the coat, pulling the gun up, pushing it forward, pulling the right hand back, connecting the right fingers to the left wrist turning the, the palms over, coming up and lifting up under the chin and striking out. And now shifting to the left, striking to the left, torsionally moving around, getting ready to strike forward like this. Opening the hands up and open and close. And we'll just leave it there. Uh, next week we'll end uh, end it by learning the last movement, which is called uh, closed Tai Chi. Uh, 
or, or closure. Uh, and you will have um, accomplished learning 31 forms. So I just wanted to add that we're starting at 11 now, uh, Pacific time. So I know there were a few people that came in late. So next week, we'll start at 11 a.m. Pacific. Okay, have a great week, everyone. Steve, thank, thank you for you. the lessons today. Thank you, Chad. See you, everybody. Bye, Felicia.